A while back we did a review of the belts made by Direct Action to provide a better idea on what belt suits which purpose best. Today we will build further upon these belts and share the setups we have created based on our own knowledge of these products and our personal experience. So in this video we'll give you all the details about the hows and whys when it comes to these setups. Before we get into these belts, make sure to support our work by subscribing and hitting the bell button and comment below for the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to check out our store shop.recombrothers.com for quality tactical equipment, accessories and other products. Here you will also find the belt combo packs which we will be talking about with an all year round discount along with other direct action products. Now, for starters, what is our relationship with Direct Action? We are a reseller of their products and we try to provide a solution for their limited stock problem. Meaning, if there's a particular product you're looking for that's not in stock, we can have it produced by them. And if it is in stock, we can deliver it as well, of course. As for the products which we will look into today, most are bought by ourselves for personal use and testing purposes. Only a few multicam products are provided by them when we started our collaboration uh, for presentation purposes towards professional units. Another thing to mention is that whether we sell certain products or not, we will always aim to be as objective as possible in our work, aside from our personal opinions of course. At last, as for the production of this video, there is no financial involvement whatsoever. The videos we make are all at our own expenses and thus we mainly do everything with what you guys buy from our store. And we rather have you guys spend your money on good products than doing donations and all that type of stuff. So again, if you want to support us, then that's the way to do it. So that being said, let's jump into our subject of today, namely the setups we have created from direct actions assortment now one of the three bells we'll be talking about here is the one my brother has built for the use at live fire tactical courses which we'll start doing very very soon but for testing purposes he has already used it during training courses and events whereas we used airsoft the other two setups we'll cover are based on the very same principles but have other belt bases a thing we do want to mention before getting into the details is that these setups work for the purpose of what we do but it might not be the case for your specific field of use. The purpose of this video is to share our thinking process so you can create something of your own or get some ideas to improve what you already have. And by the way we'll explain everything for right hand dominant users since we're both right dominant. If you're a lefty you simply have to mirror the idea. Now before we get into constructing our setup we first want to talk a little bit about what we call our fundamental factors to set up any tactical belt. If the setup doesn't comply to any of these we go back to refitting until it complies to all of them. These so-called factors we're talking about are 1. Easy accessibility, 2. Mobility efficiency and 3. Minimal stuff. The first easy accessibility is about not being clumsy and doing stupid things. You want your stuff to be easy to grab and especially that equipment you need access to in stressful situations. Because those are the moments you want to be prepared for. Mobility efficiency comes down to being able to move without too much hinder. Think about for example crouching, laying on your side, sprinting, getting over obstacles and more. With this we're also talking about the conjunction of your belt with your plate carrier or rig for example. The last one minimal stuff comes down to only carrying the equipment you really need. Too much stuff will only make you heavier and bulkier and thus less effective. However there's an important principle that applies with first line gear and that is that it serves as a backup for when things go wrong. And that means that you generally want to carry your most important equipment mainly on your belt. Another principle that applies with belts is that you want to position the most amount of weight of your kit possible onto it. This is because your leg muscles are much stronger than your shoulders and thus it's easier to carry a certain amount of weight on your hips. It's very similar like how loaded backpacks work. 
those are also designed to distribute 60 to 80 percent of the weight on your hips and not on your shoulders so that's definitely something to keep in mind that being said unlike with our plate carrier setups we don't consider versatility to be a factor here and the reason for that is that your belt setup should be as static as possible meaning you have to exactly know where everything is located if you change this too often you won't be able to act on muscle memory when needed that all said let's now go over to what we've done to create these setups and let's start off with the base as already mentioned before for these we have several belt options to choose from and on top some pouches we think are a mandatory minimum for any shooting purpose so the belts we have here are the direct action mustang inner belt the warhawk rescue gun belt and its modular brother and the mosquito modular belt sleeve as for these belts themselves we will not be looking at their details in this video because we've already done that in another one if you want to get a better idea of which of these belts fit your needs best we suggest you to go watch that other video we will put the link in the description below so that being said first thing that we have provided in all these setups is a direct action mustang inner belt we've made this one a standard because in our eyes it's an incredibly important piece of any belt that will be used in an active way this is because it maintains that important grip of all the weight you put onto it during dynamic actions that covers one belt next are the outer belts and acid for those we've made three options available one is the warhawk rescue gun belt which is a great base belt that doesn't use the molly system this one is perfect for those that are looking for a low cost high quality tactical belt and as for our setups we've called this one the gun belt the second is the warhawk modular rescue gun belt which is the advanced brother of the previous one this one does have pal slots and allows for lots of modularity options we've named this one the combat belt and for our third and final belt we have the mosquito modular belt sleeve combined with the warhawk rescue gun belt because it requires an inner belt to function this one allows for an extreme amount of modularity you can go for a very low profile setup all the way up to a heavy load bearing belt it is the most expensive out of the three though and we've called this one the war belt that's everything regarding the belt choices uh, let's now have a look into the magazine pouches we've added to the setup in order to talk about these we'll first have to look at ammo count obviously the more max the better but in reality you also have to consider weight and bulkiness our experience in both tactical courses with professionals and force on force events with use of airsoft tells us that a mag count of 5 to 8 rifle max and 2 to 4 pistol max works as a good general base this being counted from everything on your carrier or rig your belt and in your guns this way you'll have on average a total of 150 up to 240 rifle rounds and 30 up to 60 pistol rounds if we translate that amount to the belt setup it leaves us with two pistol pouches and one rifle pouch we personally know some instructors that carry more mags because again of that maximum weight on the hips principle but as said before this is what we consider to be the very bare minimum so what pouches from direct action have we chosen for this well as for the two pistol ones we have selected the direct action speed reload pistol pouch this is a pretty special magazine pouch and that's because of several reasons firstly it's an open top design which is something we consider to be a standard when it comes to belt setups as said before your belt serves as a backup and accessing those mags quickly is key now the balance that these tactical tailoring companies are all looking for these days is that sweet spot between fast access and a good retention direct action has come up with their own solution for this by using elastic shock cords that you can adjust the tension with this is pretty common but above this they have also used a special material on the inside that's called hypolon which is a very durable and grippy material these two together provide a great retention system even so that it prevents your magazine from falling out when it gets snagged onto something yet the design still allows for a fluent grab of your mag 
Another thing this design allows is that the pouch also stays open for a smooth reinsertion of the magazine. Above these features, the pouch also allows for two ways to be attached. One is with a standard Molly system and the other is with something unique to direct action, which are called belt loops. These are shock cord loops soon on the back of the pouch that go over the belt. This system provides some advantages compared to more traditional systems. One being it provides a far better retention and less wobble than the Molly system. Secondly, it maintains space for the belt its velcro to grip on one another and thus gives valuable retention. And a third advantage is that you're not limited to pell slots, meaning you can place the pouch wherever you want on the belt. Now, the nice thing is that Direct Action has made these belt loops a standard on almost all their pouches. So you can use almost all of them on your belt this way. Another interesting thing about these pistol pouches is that they can be used with a very wide range of double stack magazines. Think about 9mm to a 0.45 and even the more uncommon 4.6 and 5.7mm mags are all possible. So that's pretty much all the important ones. At last, another important aspect about this design is that there are no materials used that may break during aggressive actions. So you can definitely rely on this one to secure your ammo properly. And with that said, we covered our selection of the pistol pouches. The next one we'll look at is the rifle mag. And here we've chosen the direct action speed reload rifle pouch. As for this one, there's not a lot that needs to be said because it's basically a rifle version of the pistol one we just covered. This one can take AR, AK and SR Max and unlike the pistol version, it can take a shock cord for if you want that extra retention security. It also allows for the stacking of other pouches thanks to its bell slots. And that's it for the mag pouches themselves. Let's now talk a little bit about where we position them and how we put them to use. First thing is that we personally use the belt loops to attach these pouches. The reason why we just covered, but if you rather use the Molly system, then you can do that as well. Next, since we are right hand dominant, we've placed these pouches on our left side or around our nine o'clock. Why around our nine? Well, that depends on the next thing to consider. Since a belt mainly serves as that important backup reloads from it usually need to happen quickly. For that reason you want your magazines to be as close as possible to your immediate access. Or in other words, you want your mags to be as much towards the front of your body as possible. But there's also another thing to consider and that has to do with the mobility efficiency factor we mentioned earlier. Here we're talking about crouched positions and the issue that may occur here is that your mags can dig into your belly when doing so. And that is something you want to avoid. So for that reason we simply test and go back up to the point where that's no longer the case and position them over there. Another thing you can see is that the pistol pouches are in front of the rifle pouch and that's simply logical thinking because the other way around you will be obstructing that pistol mag accessibility. Now last thing we want to share on this is that for the pistol mags we face them with the bullets or projectiles forward and for the rifle mag we face it backwards. This all has to do with the biomechanics on the human body and how you perform your reloads. In our case for the pistol mags we grab them by positioning our index finger at the tip of the magazine and turn our hand inwards during the reload which helps you with aiming that mag into the mag well. As for the rifle mag, we move our hand a bit further and cant it slightly backwards to get that full grip. Once it's taken out of the pouch, we reverse that movement back to the gun and the magazine is directly facing the correct way. The good thing about both of these techniques is that your initial approach to either grabs is exactly the same, so that helps in building consistency. And with that being said, we have fully covered the very base of the belt setups we have created. The next additions we'll be talking about are all optional and it's up to you whether you require them or not. So moving further down the belt we come to a dump pouch. This specific one is the direct action dump pouch and although this pouch is not the slickest or the biggest dump version they have, it does have some interesting features. Firstly its design allows it to be folded which gives it a pretty small profile when tucked away. 
Secondly, it's very easy to open by simply pulling a tab that is also made out of the high polymer material. Opening the pouch also doesn't create a highly noticeable sound. The bottom is made of a mesh for water and debris to fall through and the opening on top can be narrowed down with a shock cord. The pouch also stays neatly open uh, even if there's already stuff inside. To give you an idea, volume wise this pouch can take up to 5 standard 30 Rand AR-15 magazines. Furthermore, the pouch doesn't feature molly or belt loops and thus it comes with two malice clips to attach it onto your belt. The reason for this has to do with it being designed with a pretty unique feature. This dump pouch allows the placement of pouches directly inside the bag. An example of this is using another rifle pouch and what this provides is a way to maximize the limited space you have available. Which is a pretty clever idea from Direct Action to provide you that extra bit of modularity options. The downside of doing this however is that you're not able to fold the pouch anymore. At last for the positioning of this one we've put it on the back left of our belt just so it's easy in reach for our support hand and not too much in the way until we really need it. Next to it we come to the IFAC and for this one we've chosen the Direct Action Med Pouch Horizontal MK3. Important to notice with this one is that it's specifically designed to carry all the basic trauma equipment except for a tourniquet. So this pouch will not serve very well as a boo-boo kit. Now just as all other direct action products, this one also has a few interesting features. Just like any other IFAC design, it consists of two main parts, but this one doesn't use Velcro for retention. Instead it uses a strong elastic fabric to provide grip over the pouch. For this, the inside part containing the actual pouch shoves inside the outside part that can be mounted using molly or the belt loops. The good thing about this design is that there's no need for an extra strap or something since the grip is great. It's also designed to not interfere that much when sitting in a car seat and to have a low snag probability. So losing this one will be very unlikely. Above that, the outer part features the word MET in a non-outstanding way for identification. This word is also covered in Velcro to allow patch placement for if you want to make it more recognizable. The design also features two pull handles, one on each side, to be able to take it with either hands. These handles are also made of the high pull material for a good grip. Now once the inside pouch is out, you can open the pouch rapidly with two other pull tabs present on top of its design. After you've opened it, you can lay it open to have full access to everything inside. The inside is a very simple design that only uses a couple of elastic straps. It may not look like much, but it's actually perfectly configured for that necessary trauma equipment. Furthermore, as for this pouch, we personally do use it with its molly system and position it on the back slightly to the right so that access with both hands is possible. And that being said, we did mention the absence of a tourniquet in this pouch. And for that particular reason, we also added the option to provide the direct action tourniquet pouch as well. This one is a pouch with elastic material to fit and grip on the tourniquet. It also features a velcro flap to protect the velcro strips on the tourniquet from dirt that can reduce its effectiveness. The interesting part about this design is that it can be mounted in three different ways. One is with a classic molly system, the second is with the belt loops and the third option is to have it mounted horizontally thanks to the extra velcro straps. This is of course a very interesting option for belts, so it doesn't interfere with your body movements. This is especially on the front with your legs, which is what we've done on the right front side. And with that said, we covered all the pouches on these setups. What is not included in these packs is obviously the holster. But we do want to talk a little bit about what options you have with it. With a holster you have two options to mount it onto these belts. Depending on what system you use, you can either attach it onto the belts with a molly system on those belts that feature this, or you can attach it over the belt. We personally both use a mid-right drop leg platform with a leg strap for a better draw and retention on the leg. This system is placed over the belt which works great for us. 
we also position our holster slightly more towards the front of our trigger clock since we've noticed it gives a slightly smoother draw. Now having all that covered the next thing we want to share with you guys is our experience with our personal preference out of these three belts. For us that is our combat belt setup but we're curious about what you guys think. Do you like the gun belt setup, the combat belt setup or the war belt setup most? Let us know in the comments which you prefer. Now moving on, as mentioned earlier, this combat belt setup is my brother's belt which he has already used on several occasions and this already brought up some feedback. The first and most noticeable thing for him was the ease of attaching the outer belt on the inner belt and the retention it brings compared to similar belt systems. We already said it in our previous videos, the velcro hooks on these are something we've only seen on some direct action their products and they work very well although they are less aggressive on other fabric materials like your pants for example. A thing where he is really a fan of are the magazine pouches. And to be fair, we are both really impressed with these. Even so that we can say these are most likely amongst the best open top magazine designs on the market these days. They are not cheap, but they are worth every buck in our eyes. As for the dump pouch, we cannot share that much, simply because my brother hasn't used it that much yet. Going to the med pouch, something he immediately noticed is that this one doesn't bump onto your butt, when running around due to its horizontal design. You also don't have the problem of hitting the pouch with your feet when taking a knee. And above that, although you can't carry a lot in this one, it is a pretty good low profile setup for carrying a trauma kit. And at last for the tourniquet pouch, he mentioned there is nothing bad to say about this one either. It holds the tourniquet really well keeps it clean and protected and thanks to its horizontal positioning never interferes with your legs when mounted up front. Only a way to attach a marker would have been a nice addition. And with that all said we have come to an end with this video. For you guys that are looking for one of these setups you can only get them through shop.3combrothers.com with an all year around discount. The colors we currently offer for these are Cry's Multicam, Coyote Brown, Ranger Green and Black. Something new we want to mention at last is that from now on above the fact that the camo versions are NIR treated, all the plain colors from Direct Action products are now IRR treated to help reduce your infrared profile if you want to consider that type of stuff. So guys, make sure to like this video if it helped you out. Thank you for watching and you'll see us next time again. And especially that equipment you need access to in stressful shit situations. Situations. <laughs> situations. Another interesting thing about this pistol pouch is that it can be.